Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I am your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews and on-site training. And in this episode, I am going to kind of go back to a fundamentals here and just give you a demonstration as to how you use exceptions in C++. Now, I fully appreciate that exceptions have a bit of a bad connotation right now, and I am not going to necessarily go into that, but I will say that I have a friend who is also a patron of this channel who has been doing a fair bit of research into exceptions, and the places where exceptions actually result in smaller, faster code compared to the alternatives. And so hopefully you will see conference talks coming up in the near future on this particular topic. But I just wanted to show you how exceptions work. This episode is sponsored by Undo. Undo makes time travel debugging tools. Here's how time travel debugging works. Here we are at a software failure caught by an assertion detecting a bad value. We can use reverse operations to go backwards to see where the bad value came from. We can use watch points going backwards too. So we set one on the bad value and use reverse continue to run backwards. Here we are at the point the bad value was stored to the data structure. We are actually storing negative one and a very large negative number which overflows to zero. We have found the bug. That is, we are not range checking this loop and we are trying to work out the square root of negative one. And I'll start with just one quick guideline. Please don't overuse them. It is easy to get into a trap of using exceptions for all the things. I say don't return by exception. I mean, don't use it as your normal control flow, which I have done in the past before. Generally speaking, you want your exceptions to occur in the exceptional case. You don't want it to be the normal thing to do, which is again, a mistake I've made in the past. Okay, so on the most basic level, you can throw something, anything, in C++. I can throw an integer, and if I'm looking at the binary output here in Compiler Explorer, I can see CXA, allocate exception, blah blah blah, it's assigning the value 42 to some integer i that's been created on the heap, and then it is throwing that object that was just constructed. If I were to try to run this program, then I'm going to get an unhandled exception called from the runtime. The C++ runtime is saying terminate called after throwing an instance of int. Okay, so I can catch this int. And to do that, I use a try catch block. Now I have just taken this from a program that throws 42 that is uncaught to a program that returns 42. So let's just note here this program returns 42, that's all it does. Program returned 42. But the compiler never sees through this. It's doing the allocate exception. It's creating this integer. It's assigning the value 42 to it. It's calling unwind resume down here in main. It has to call a catch. It catches the value into EBX, and then it copies EBX into EAX, and that is the register that is returned from main, which is the integer 42. We could make a general statement that this code is, quote, obvious to optimize, but compilers simply don't. So just be aware of that. Okay, so that is the very simple case. Now, let's go ahead and create another function. Actually, let's create two functions. So if I call this do work function with false, I'm gonna pass that down to function that throws, is float is false, I'm gonna throw 42, I'm gonna catch 42, I'm gonna return 42 from main, program returns 42. If I make this true, then I'm gonna get that runtime error again. I have terminate called after throwing an instance of double because I threw a double and I don't have any catch for it. Now note, I'm actually catching this double, but I'm not doing anything with the value. The program returns zero because by default, that's what main does in C++ is it returns zero if we don't return a value. Let's go ahead for the fun of it and just return, I don't know, negative one. 
So we can see value 255 is returned. That's the same thing as negative one as a single byte. Let's, I don't know, have it return one or something that's slightly less obvious. There we go. Okay, so this actually makes a runtime determination as to which catch block to call. And you can specify as many of these things as you want to. So let's make this code slightly more realistic in that I am going to, inside of here, now throw a standard runtime exception. Now note, I am throwing a runtime error or I'm not throwing anything at all. If I throw the runtime error, then I don't have anything that catches it because I've got an int and I've got a double catch here. Now, this is where we have the next note. If you put three dots, it will catch any type of exception, but that is possibly a code smell. It says, I don't know what the writer of this code did. They could be throwing anything and I don't care. I'm going to ignore the error. It's not necessarily the best option. Okay, so this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. First of all, you generally want to catch by const reference. And you can see here that I have a program that through the value boo, I catch it and I print that out. Now, runtime error is derived from standard exception. Okay, we're getting an error here that is incredibly helpful, and I will say is probably a fairly recent error because I don't recall ever seeing this one before. It says, exception of type runtime error will be caught by earlier handler. So the compiler has told us that we need to reorder these exceptions. So exception handlers work with RTTI, that is the runtime type information, and polymorphism. Which I think brings me now to the last thing that I wanted to point out, and this is something that in some circles is known as a Lippincott function. But I demonstrate it here mostly just to illustrate a point. This can be used for code deduplication, and I think I've probably covered this in a previous episode. But let's just go ahead and do this. This is going to look very weird. Okay, so I have the catch all, which I just told you was possibly a code smell, and it's this dot 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 function. And from in here, I call handler. Now, handler has a statement that looks strange. It's this throw without any parameters. And all that does is rethrow the currently in flight exception, and then we can do our smart handling. So I think that covers the most general basics of exceptions in C++. There's more to this, of course. There's lots of things about the rules of lifetimes, which you should have me at your organization to do an understanding object lifetime class with your team if you would like to understand more about that. And there are things from C11 like exception pointer and stuff that also complicate some things, but um, I think that pretty well covers it. So be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe, and I will catch you in the next episode.